Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Richard Matthews about leveraging automated workflows to help elevate your people and business. Richard Matthews, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it is wonderful to have you as a guest on my podcast. I had the privilege of being a guest on your podcast, what, a week or so ago, uh, whenever oh, yeah. that was. And uh, that was a really fun conversation on the Hero Show. Today, we're going to flip the the roles a little bit. I'll be interviewing you and we'll be having a nice conversation today about leveraging automated workflows to help elevate your people, and your business. We live in the age of automation and machine learning, AI, and the question becomes, how do we leverage these technologies in a way that we can enhance the the work of our people? Um, There will necessarily be some displacement, um, some even replacement of certain tasks and certain roles, Uh, but ultimately, if we leverage the technologies well, I'm a big believer that it'll actually enhance the work life of, of our people and our teams overall, and it'll be a a win for everybody. So we're going to have that conversation today. As we get started, I just wanted to share Richard's bio with everybody. Richard Matthews is the owner of the push button podcast and the hero show over the last 10 years, Richard and his clients have sold over 2 million worth of online courses and coaching more than 50 million. If you count leads and sales generated from stints, helping local and e-commerce businesses. He is also a speaker, consultant, author, and inventor whose work has impacted some of the top expert brands across the country. He specializes in helping businesses automate their marketing, build their offers, master their technology, and design their instruction in ways that create success stories that snowball the business's growth. Uh, What a wonderful background. It's a real pleasure to have you. Anything you would like to share with listeners by way of your personal background before we launch into the conversation? Yeah, sure. Just a couple of things. I, um, uh, I, one of the things that I try to tell people all the time um, is you can do whatever you want with your life if you just put your mind to it. My wife and I wanted to travel full time. Um, and so we've been on the road traveling full time for uh, four years now coming up. Uh, it's May 10th is the time of this recording. May 28th is our four year anniversary traveling full time. We've got four kids and a poodle, and I'm in the back bus or the back bedroom of a 40 foot RV here. I think maybe if I if I zoom this out a little bit, you might even be able to see my my RV a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know how how that works. But anyways, I'm in the back bedroom of an RV. We travel full time. I've grown my business a little over four times, um, for in terms of clients that we've served, revenue that we've created, and uh, um, just the amount of content stuff that we put out while we've been traveling. So. Um, The whole idea that you can live your dreams is absolutely possible. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want. So, I love it. And as we talked about when I was on your podcast, you know, I'm very jealous because I, I, my kids all joke, you know, my wife, my, my, my wife teases me because I would love to get like a a big bus and do a conversion and like live in a bus and drive around the country um, or, or do a tiny house on wheels or something like that. Um, but I have six kids and they think it's insane. So actually after our conversation, yeah, I got four like, kids and they love it. I, after our last conversation, <laughs> that's what I, I, I went back to my family. I'm like, Hey, I, you know, I just talked to this guy. He's, he's been doing it for four years. He has four kids and a dog. They're doing just fine. <laughs> they, they still think I'm crazy, <laughs> but, uh, I, I appreciate you giving me a little bit of ammo there, you know, and having that uh, conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, very good. I, I, and I, I am just uh, kudos. I admire you for, for, you know, living your dream and, and 
focusing on what's meaningful to you and your family. And it's not an either or proposition, right? You can have success yeah. in life and in business, uh, whether you're living in like a stationary home, kind of live in the, the typical nine to five uh, life, you can do it on the road, living in an, uh, a, a bus or an RV or, or whatever and see the world. So uh, that's one of the amazing things about the world we live in today that we just have a yeah, lot of technology is amazing. Technology <laughs> is wonderful. Well, and that's actually a really great segue into what we're going to be talking about today because so much of your work focuses on how to leverage automation uh, and you do that in, with your companies and, and with the work you do in consulting for organizations. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your approach um, as you work with organizations to think about yeah, leveraging so automation? My, my approach can be boiled down to one simple rule. Um, and so we'll take the whole huge conversation about automation and turn it into one really simple rule. And the simple rule is this, never automate human creativity. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is open, um, is is open for uh, for for automating and creating stuff. So the way that we approach um, creating systems in our business and in the businesses that we work with is generally looking at how can we take the work that people do, right? And that's the important thing, right? Because all the businesses are are they're people driven. That's going to continue to be the case. I know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of discussion about industries being disrupted by automation and things like that. And that's true. There's a lot of stuff that's going to disrupt, um, disrupt industries, but what's not going to change is the human capital required to make automation possible to make the world continue to go. Right. You know, the only reason we run any of the businesses we do is to work with people and to tell stories and to do that kind of stuff. That's not going to go away. It might shift or change. Um, but so when we're looking at building systems, we look at what's the human capital and the human capital is, is about um, is about finding where the creativity lines are, right? Um, and so when we look at stuff, we look at things like, um, for example, in our podcast business, um, we run an agency called Push Button Podcasts, and there's a lot of stuff that happens on the backside of recording an episode like this one, right? We're going to get off the uh, off of this. Uh, podcast and someone's going to have to do the editing and someone's going to have to do the uh, audio editing and someone's going to have to do the graphic design and someone's going to have to do the uh, transcription and all those different things. Some of those things are, I mean, they're going to have to publish and all the, you know, put it up on all, all the websites. And there's a really clear differentiating factor for between tasks that humans can do and tasks that robots can do. Um, so just as an example, when it comes to doing graphic design, right? When we're going to do the episode covers, that's generally a human task because the creativity required, maybe we'll eventually get to the point where AI can do some of it, but it's always going to have to be touched by a human at some point um, because machines make poor decisions when it comes to creative things. <laughs> um, but when it comes to things like uploading the video to YouTube, that's the kind of thing that's right for a robot to do. Um, and so that's the, uh, the first decision is where are the lines for What's a human do? What's a robot do? Um, and that's, does it require creativity? That's the question we ask. Um, and then the second part of that can I, can is- I just uh, build off yeah, of that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that's exactly right. Um, and I know people are worried about automation, uh, whether you're working in a factory and there's robots coming in to displace workers or it's using machine learning, AI, whatever, to do uh, repetitive tasks. Yes, what that will require is for people to reskill and upskill um, so they're not the ones doing those repetitive tasks and we can hand them over to technology to take care of. But what that means is we're going to have jobs that are more creative, more strategic, um, more fulfilling because you're doing work that matters that's not routinized. If, if, I, if like 90% of my job can be done by an AI that's not the kind of work that I'm going, to, that's going to drive a lot of um, satisfaction in life and fulfillment. Uh, and so I yeah. think it's, it's a, it's overall, it's, there's discomfort there and people have to learn and they have to change uh, and shift. And I, I recognize that's hard, but uh, I think overall, I think it's a good thing for people, for individuals. I think it's a good thing for society as we can focus more on work that matters. Yeah. And the way that I say that to my team is to uh, is to do only what only you can do. Um, and so I, I, I like I like to 
make sure any of the systems that we're working on. So like we'll, we'll build our processes out in Trello. That's what we use for internally for our, our systems, our project management and stuff like that. And um, we'll make, we'll, we'll split out each one of the, uh, the workflows, sorry, each one of the processes in our workflows will be split along lines where um, one individual can own it with their unique skill set, right? Whatever, something that only they can do. Um, and anything that anyone can do, generally a robot can do. So <laughs> that's where, where we're, we're making, you know, we make robots to do everything from like, you know, when you move a, a card from one step to the next in your workflow, um, we have robots to do everything from re changing over the, the description of the task to removing the checklist and adding the new ones to, you know, every, all the little minutia that goes into moving one thing to another in a system, we build robots that do all of those things so that the human being who's going to do their work can just show up and do the thing that they're good at, whether that's the writing or the graphic design or the editing, which is, you know, the stuff that's in our business. But depending on what you're building the systems for, um, we try to build the robots to take all the minutia and all the things that anyone could do and leave just the stuff that, you know, to your point, makes you come alive, right? The stuff that you're good at, the stuff that, um, you know, requires human creativity, human touch. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. And you, you were starting to go into your second thing and then I interrupted. Yeah, the, the second part of that um, is, so if you're, if you're going to build systems that are based on that delineation between creativity and um, and not creative tasks. Um, the other part you have to recognize is that robots are incapable of making decisions. Um, and as far as we know, even AI is not good at making decisions, right? You're, you're giving them um, even complex AI and machine learning is you have to feed them stuff and give them parameters and all this other stuff. And they're making... Um, they don't make creative decisions. And like, I know there's, there's this really funny um, YouTube video where you can watch where they're talking about um, building uh, machine learning AI. Um, and they're like, Hey, here's a stick figure. And we want to get the stick figure to go across like these different chasms and like make him walk and whatnot. And the robots just like, Oh, so if we take all the lines from the stick figure and turn it into a big giant pole and just drop it on its side, I've successfully completed the uh, thing. But that's like, that's the way computers think is they don't think they just, <laughs> they, they don't make good decisions. So what, um, what we try to do when we're building our systems is um, at the front end of your, um, each one of your, like, as you move through a workflow, you have to front load all the decisions. And so the decisions are the outcome of creativity, right? So when it comes to something like, to use the YouTube example we did a minute ago, um, when a, we're going to upload a video to YouTube, um, there's a lot of things that have to be done, right? So you have to have like the YouTube thumbnail and you have to have the title written and you have to have the description and the keywords and the actual video file, which has all the edits done to it. There's all those things that are there. And the way most people approach systems is they think, okay, and now I'm to the point in my system where we have to upload this video to YouTube. Let's make sure we have, I got to get the video edited. So they go and edit the video and they're like, okay, I need to get a title written. So they go and they write the title, right? And they're switching back and forth into different modalities of work. And what we try to do is we try to build systems where all the decisions for a, for something that a robot's going to handle are already handled, 
right? So we feed completed decisions into robots. Um, and when it comes to, you know, like uploading the YouTube video, when we get to that point in the robot, we want to have all of those things that the human beings are going to do the, you know, the writing for the titles and the product descriptions and the research for the keywords and the graphic design for the YouTube thumbnail, all that stuff is done already. And then you can feed it into the robot. Um, so I call that front loading decisions. And we try to design all of our systems. So you end up with um, any dependencies are, are taking care of the earliest port part of your system. Um, so when you get to the last part of your systems, the uh, the robots can really take over and do a lot of work. Um, so like in our podcast production um, system, all the human tasks are taken care of in the first floor, first three or four like workflows. And then the next 17 or so workflows are all automated and just ding, 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 and run all the way through. They're very fast, um, but they're capable of being fast and doing all that work because we did all the human stuff first. Um, so anyways, hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, those are sort of my couple of big rules for building systems and tying both human and robots together. Yeah, no, it, it makes great sense. And it's a really good example. It illustrates again, what you, what we were talking about a minute ago, that you cannot replace humans. Uh, you don't have, uh, maybe we'll get there, but we don't currently have the technology where we can just hand it over to AI to say, get this episode all ready to go and then, you know, do everything. Like we, we need uh, creative humans with wisdom and intelligence who can make a lot of decisions um, to ultimately feed inputs into the, these, uh, these technologies to be able to then uh, automate. Uh, they can take out a lot of the tedious tasks that have to be performed in order to move things along. Uh, and, and we just get a focus on the fun stuff, right? The, the creative stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know, that personally, that's what I want to spend my time doing. The, the the most frustrating stuff that I have to do in my day to day are those things that I'm just realizing, oh my gosh, this is so dumb. Like, why am I wasting my time on this? I either want to hire someone who can do the, the work for me or even better, you know, have, have um, technologies that can help and assist uh, when, when necessary. And then that just frees up yeah. more, more capital to, to focus on hiring people for other more creative things, right? Yeah, and that's that's actually a really important point too. You said you talked about you know I want just want to hire someone to get rid of this task, and that is um, that one of the things that I see a lot of businesses do is they they hire without thought to the capabilities of technology, um, and so we hire human beings to do tasks that robots could do better, right? And so it goes the other direction too, because um, you'll spend more money and have less happy people if you are hiring people to do tasks that could be done by a robot. Um, you know, Absolutely. robots are particularly good at doing data pushing, right? So if you're hiring someone to do data pushing, you could probably hire one person to manage a system, manage a robotic system and do 10 times the amount of data pushing with one person who's creative with the creation of those systems. Um, so I think it goes both ways. One, you need to know, you know, where not to hire or where not to implement automation, and that's when creativity is involved. And where not to hire human creativity is when you can, when you have stuff that uh, that technology is really good at, right? Um, and I think, I think that's actually probably a more common problem um, today is people don't understand what the capabilities of technology are, um, so they're still hiring human beings to do work that is going to get outsourced, is going to get turned into robot stuff. Um, and anyways, I, I don't actually know the solution to that other than education and, you know, doing things like this and, <laughs> and helping show people what the capabilities of technology is, but. Yes, yeah, so certainly the education piece of learning the capabilities, that's really important. Uh, I think it's just also, it's really, really important for organizational leaders to be thinking about how they're going to reskill and upskill their people. Um, because, you know, we, let's assume that people understand the capabilities and we're doing the best we can to hire people um, not just for today, but for tomorrow uh, to think about, yeah. you know, what, what we need them to be doing um, that may be displaced by, by machines in the short term. E even if that's our, our mindset, which it's not the mindset for a lot of people, but let's assume for a second, that's our mindset. We know the capabilities it's still really hard because of the rapid pace of technological advancement. It's, it's going to be really hard to stay on top of that and, and to not hire people, you know, where, where we can have 
a software system or an AI, you know, do a lot of that work. And so what that requires is we have to have a, a, a continual focus towards um, lifelong learning, reskilling, upskilling within the organization so that my people, when the time comes that we do have this new system in place, that I'm not faced with the decision, okay, I now, now I just need to, to fire some people, downsize. But if, if you have talented people that have been valuable to the company, you don't want to lose good people, uh, but you just need to have them ready for the next role, yeah, right? And- doing new work that's going to be more fulfilling, more important for them and better for their careers. But that, that requires foresight and that requires you know, really kind of more a long-term perspective and strategic thinking. And unfortunately, a lot of leaders find themselves in the daily grind of just kind of putting out fires and being reactionary rather than planning for the future. And I I think that's one of the big things we need to get better at. I know one of the things that uh, um, we have to think about with our systems, and I know it's probably common anywhere else, anytime you you build a robot, um, robots are to this point, they are not capable of knowing when their leg is broken, so to speak, to put it in a metaphorical sense. Um, so, you know, if you got a, like an actual robot and he breaks his leg, he'll just keep going, right? Until his whole thing, until everything is destroyed. Um, and so you have to think about when you're building your systems, what is your like error? How do you handle errors and having people um, in the, you know, that, that can keep track of what the robots are doing and have quality control and all of those things in place. And, that's, I think, where a lot of the whole reskilling and upskilling is learning how to look at your automated systems and see when they break down and know how to fix them and know how to move them forward I and mean, put them back into, you know, how to set the set the break, so to speak. <laughs> um, yeah, and- yeah, absolutely. And again, that's where the human beings are vital. Uh, maybe we'll get to the point where we have self-fixing um, technologies that can be better at, at understanding when, when they've broken down or they're not functioning the way they should be. But we, we really need human oversight uh, for the technologies that we have. And that, that is a much more meaningful and creative uh, type of work that, that people can do. Like they, they, they had been doing the processes. You start to systematize it. You, you automate it. Those are the, those are great people to, reskill and upskill to now be able to oversee the process that machines are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a fascinating thing too. Cause one of the, one of the things just like as, as an example for like why you might want to build systems um, in, in your business is because like uh, the push button podcasts agency that we run um, was a system we built for ourselves um, in our business, just to run our own hero show podcast, which you were a guest on. And I shared that system internally with some of my mastermind buddies um, just to be like, hey, this is what I've been working on. We built this whole system for our podcast. Here's what it looks like. Here's the human beings that are behind it. Here's the robots that are behind it that we've developed for all of that. And um, I was blind to it at the time um, because I was, you know, in the weeds with it. But they were like, that's a service, right? That's a that's a service you could offer to other people. And when you build really solid systems, really solid systems are the baseline for really good service-based businesses. Um, so you can actually turn that into additional revenue to grow your organization when you take the time to build really solid human and robot powered systems. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Well, Richard, it has been a real pleasure talking with you and exploring this topic together. Uh, I'm mindful of the time and I want to be respectful of your time. Before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, how they can find out more about your work, your organizations, uh, your podcast, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Yeah. So um, if you want to reach out to um, to to me at all, you can uh, find us on our agency website, which is pushbuttonpodcasts.com. Um, and we actually have a whole system around helping people like yourself um, or other small businesses that are using podcasts to drive leads and sales. We help you build a whole content machine out of that and um, make it so that you only have to show up and record content. We do literally everything else for your podcast. So that's pushbuttonpodcasts.com. Uh, dot com. 
I do have my own uh, website where our podcast is hosted. That's uh, richardmatthews.me. We talk about how to build heroic brands um, and the hero show um, is on there. So if you are uh, interested in learning how to do that, we talk to entrepreneurs, get their story as if they were a comic book superhero. So that's a, a fun show. Um, and we get lots of cool stuff we talk about on that podcast as well. So those are the two best ways to, uh, to reach out to me. Um, I do have a a uh, course that is almost completed called push button process um, that teaches people how to use Zapier and Trello to automate their um, as much of their systems as possible and really how to, to do a lot of stuff we talked about today. Course isn't finished yet, but if you want to go to pushbuttonprocess.com and fill out the little waiting list thing, um, you know, I'll give a, give anyone who came on this show like a 50% discount or something like that if you guys uh, guys see it when it comes out. So that's a, we'll, we'll put like a coupon code or something in the show notes for you. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Richard. It has been a pleasure. I really encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Richard, find out more about what he and his organization can do for you. Check out the podcast. Uh, so many great creative things that you're doing and enjoy your travels around the country and uh, enjoy time with your family. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.